Thank you everyone um, for being here today. Welcome to Stanford Medicine, um, an introduction to the Tobacco Prevention Toolkit. And my name is Elizabeth Pena and I'm the Youth Engagement Project Coordinator um, at the California School-Based Health Alliance. And we'll just go over some really brief housekeeping. So there won't be any slides to share today. However, there is um, the, this webinar is being recorded and can be found on our website. As soon as I stop sharing my screen, I will um, share the links to our website and where you'll be able to find this recording. This recording will also be sent out to attendees. And the webinar schedule is um, from 10.30 to 12 p.m. And feel free um, to use the chat box for any questions you may have. And I will go ahead and um, share the link briefly where you can find other supporting materials. Just earlier this month, we had Dr. Bonnie Hul Hulpern of Belcher, the founder and executive director of this toolkit, present on adolescent tobacco use prevention and sensation practices. And so we'll be able to link the slides and recording if you weren't able to make it. And so I just really uh, briefly want to share about the California School-Based Health Alliance for anyone that is not familiar. So we are a nonprofit organized, a statewide nonprofit organization dedicated to improving the health and academic success of children and youth by advancing health services in schools. So our work is really based on two concepts that healthcare should be accessible and where kids are and schools should have the services needed to ensure that poor health is not a barrier to learning. And we do this through capacity building, technical assistance, trainings and webinars like today. And now, um, please feel free to enter um, in the chat if you have any questions regarding the California School Based Health Alliance. And like I said, I'll go ahead and be linking a few things in the chat shortly. And now I'd like to turn it over to our presenter, Adrian Lazaro, the Tobacco Prevention Toolkit project co-director. So I'll go ahead and pass it over to you. Thank you, Elizabeth. Hi, good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. Thank you so much for um, joining us today. I know 10.30 a.m. on a Friday afternoon is like prime real estate on your on your calendar. So I appreciate um, the fact that you're here joining um, and to listen about the, the toolkits today. And I just want to make a note that I have some construction happening in my environment. So um, please excuse any, any sounds that you might hear, um, possible dogs all that stuff but such is the life of somebody working from home right um so thanks so much for joining like i said and as i introduce myself i would love to hear a little bit about where you all are and what role you play um in the chat so um you know you can let me know sort of what your role is and where you're joining in from um, and that'll help me tailor this talk today um and and kind of give me some guideposts of, of what to cover um and additionally if there's anything in particular that you're interested in hearing more about um feel free to put that in the chat and i'll do my best um, to cover that there will be time for questions and answers at the end so um i think we have plenty of time to cover and give you a good good sense of what the toolkit has to offer so um that said i guess i'll introduce myself so again, so I'm Adrienne. I'm a project co-director um, on the Tobacco Prevention Toolkit and also the Cannabis Awareness and Prevention Toolkit, which I can cover, you know, very briefly towards the end um, if you have any questions about that. And my main focus for today is to give you some tools that you can start using tomorrow if you chose to um, from the tobacco prevention toolkit. So a little background on me, I was a health educator at a school based health center in the East Bay. I'm joining um, this call from Oakland, California. And um, so the school based health centers are near and dear to my heart. Um, there's I, I recognize that there are probably multiple hats that you're wearing um, and multiple demands on your time. Um, so our goal with the Tobacco Prevention Toolkit is to make things easy, uh, make it easy for you to find materials that help you understand concepts better and share that information with youth. Um, so that's my goal is to cover those things today. And I'm gonna scan the chat to see where folks are joining in from. Very cool. All right, thank you so much for joining. All right, great. Um, so welcome again. So let me go ahead and share and we'll get started. So, um, and Elizabeth, if you wouldn't mind putting in the chat the website, um, 
URL. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you sort of where to find everything on our toolkit website. And I'm going to dive deep into one, our newest uh, resource, our vaping prevention course that's completely online. Um, and if there's any questions, I'll answer those at the end. So to get started, I want to get a sense of sort of what you already know about um, e-cigarettes or vapes or whatever terminology uh, you choose to use. So I'm going to start a Kahoot and we'll see how many folks we can get to join. So if you've never used Kahoot before, what you, you'll do using your phone or computer or a tablet is you'll go to www.kahoot.it. Once you get there, it'll ask you for a game pin and that's this number here. So again, you just go type in www.kahoot.it and type in this game pin and we'll be able to um, to play the game. So this game, we have a ton of cahoots on our website. I'll show you where to find them. We have them about a bunch of different topics. <laughs> Sleepy man, I appreciate the honesty there. Um, we have a bunch of cahoots and they're already available for you to use. So the one we're gonna play today is already available for you to use. Um, and this will give me a good sense of, of sort of where we're all coming in from, uh, how much information we already have about these products. All right, we got nine, let's see. I'll give it a, maybe a minute or two more. So again, you go to this website and you type in this pin. It's Friday, Treasure, hi, Nicole, Jasmine, Mark. <laughs> oh, and let me make a note. If you've never used Kahoot before, this is a great um, tool to use in classrooms because it's an online quiz where it's competitive. So the purpose is to not only get the question right or correct, uh, you want to be the first one to get the answer right, and that's going to um, bring you up on the scoreboard. A nice feature that it has is if there's a name that's inappropriate, you can easily remove it and ask students to rejoin using a, a more appropriate name. So um, it's a really great tool if you're if you're not familiar with it already. I know most folks are because we're doing a lot of remote stuff. So all right, we got an even 20. So let's get started. Ooh, 21. All right. So this is the final knowledge check from our vaping prevention course, which we'll cover in a little bit later. All right, so first question, which of these increase the addictiveness of a cigarette and an e-cigarette slash vape? Was it sugar, flavors, increased nicotine, or all of the above? So you see here the timer is counting down. This is how much time you have left to answer. And here's how many people have answered. Let's and all right, so the correct answer is all of the above. So um, some people don't know, but sugars and flavors can also increase the addictiveness of um, cigarette and an e-cigarette because it makes it more palatable. So the more that you're able to consume, the higher uh, levels of nicotine you're consuming, the more potential for addiction. And so top of the scoreboard, we have JL. So let's see what happens next. All right, question two out of 10. Which of the following is not true about pod-based e-cigarettes slash vapes that contain salt-based nicotine? Is it that they create an aerosol, not a water vapor? They have a less harsh throat hit compared to cigarettes. They contain nicotine, or each pod has less nicotine than a pack of cigarettes. Which of the following is not true? All right, most folks got it right, but there's a little bit of a spread here. So. That's right. Um, each pod has more nicotine than a pack of cigarettes, and we cover that in a lot of our um, materials. Um, and the rest are true. So they do create an aerosol um, and not a water vapor. So the term vape is actually misleading. That's why a lot of people in education or research uh, prefer the term e-cigarette because it's a more accurate term uh, to refer to these devices versus vape, um, but we recognize that there are not very many youth who refer to these things as e-cigarettes, so it is important to use the lingo that um, youth are using. Uh, they do have a less harsh throat hit, so this is part of the reason that salt-based um, nicotine, so products like Juul or Puff Bar, um, have a higher potential for addiction. Again, they make it easier to consume, uh, which is increasing the potential addictiveness. All right, so we got a little bit of a shift on the scoreboard, but JL is still comfortably at the top. All right, next question. Arsenic is a cancerous chemical released from cigarettes and e-cigarettes. Arsenic is commonly used to make metal plates, in rat poison, to make batteries, or in particle boards. 
So let's see what you all think. Arsenic is commonly used in, correct, rat poison. All right, uh, let's go to, let's see if we can speed things up a little bit now. Ooh, Kim's on a little bit of a hot streak. JL still comfortably at the top. All right, exposure to secondhand aerosol, which is the aerosol released from e-cigarettes can cause respiratory infection, make someone's asthma worse, lead to cancer or all of the above. I'm pretty impressed. It looks like we're for the most part all on the same page with these questions. Very nice, very nice. All of the above, correct. All right. All right, not much shift there. All right, question five. Using cigarettes, blank, the chances of developing blank disease. Is it decreases heart, increases heart, increases lung and heart, or decreases lung and heart? This one's a little bit challenging because you have to do the mental matching of what goes where. Let's see what we have. All right, most folks got it right. Yep, it increases the chance of developing lung and heart disease. Um, so even a few years ago when I first started in this work, um, these kinds of statements were difficult to make because there wasn't a lot of research as to what the long-term or even short-term effects of using e-cigarettes um, might be. So it's, uh, and on one hand, it's, it's great that we have enough research now to be able to make these kinds of statements. On the other hand, it's unfortunate that, um, you know, this is still an ongoing problem, particularly for young people, but it sounds like you folks are pretty much in the know. Oh, we got a shift. Mark is at the top. I am so sorry, JL. Let's really quickly, Adrian, I wanted to ask for folks that um, were just joining, do you happen to have the pin? Um, oh, shoot. oh, right here. Uh, yes, it is. Let me see if I can. I'll type it in the chat. Oh, I think I can. There we go. Thank you. Uh-huh. All right. Moving forward, so we're at question six out of 10. How is smoking slash vaping related to coronavirus slash COVID-19? Again, this is something that is fresh off of the research presses, um, this type of information, obviously, um, to, relevant to the, the times now, but let's see, how are they related? Oh, wow, I'm impressed. <laughs> yeah, most folks got it right. So can make a, a coronavirus infection worse. So there's a lot of different talking points that people have related to smoking and COVID or uh, vaping. And some people think might incorrectly assume that it leads to an infection. That's not correct unless you're sharing devices with somebody who's infected. Um, it does not It, she definitely froze on my screen as well. So let's just give her a minute to reconnect. There we go. I'm back. Sorry about that. Okay, let me. Oh, let no me. worries. Uh, let's see. Okay, are we back? Okay, looks good. All right, so sorry if we missed a question. I don't think so, but um, why do cigarette and e-cigarette companies add nicotine to their products? So this is a really fun question to ask young people. Why do they add it to their products? It's, it's pretty obvious once you think about the bottom line. Um, an addictive customer or an addicted customer guarantees more income. And so this is this in particular is a talking point that young people really respond to. Um, you know, as a young person, they value or like an adolescent, there's a lot of value in autonomy um, in their own decision making and, um, you know, kind of working their way to adulthood. And so manipulation is something that they typically want to avoid. So that's a good talking point to bring up. 
All right, Mr. Moore, still comfortably at the top. All right, we got a few more questions. Why is it harder for an adult to become addicted to nicotine? What do you think? It's easier to become addicted to nicotine while we're young. Brain development for adults isn't exciting and they respond less to drugs. Addiction depends on the individual. It's not the same for everyone. Brain development is completed by age 25, so it's harder to hijack the brain. Yep. All right. So um, brain development is complete by 25, and that's changes for different people, right? But it is harder to um, manipulate a brain that's already fully developed. So uh, the adolescent brain is prime for many good things. There's a lot of positive benefits to having an adolescent brain, um, although one downside is there, there is a higher potential for addiction. All right. Question nine out of 10. Oops, let's see. All right, if young people know that e-cigarettes are bad for their health and that nicotine is addictive, why do some people start using them? The flavors are appealing, the devices look sleek and cool, the ads on social media make them seem harmless or all of the above. Very nice. Yep, it looks like, well, technically everybody got it right, but there's only one correct answer. So let's see, all right. Last question, I believe. Why is it so important to make sure that menthol cigarettes and e-cigarettes aren't sold for consumption? So menthol in particular, is it because companies have targeted the black community for decades with menthol? Too many deaths due to black people becoming hooked on menthol cigarettes. This is a social justice issue or all of the above. All right. See the big reveal. All right, let's see top three. Number three, getting eight out of 10, Misha. Congratulations. Two is Mark. That leaves number one spot. Mr. Moore. Wow, <laughs> very nice. Runners up, SH and Alex. So very, very nice. All right, well, I hope that was, um, and enlightening for some of you. Maybe that was something that you learned that you didn't know already, but it seemed like from uh, the most part, folks are pretty pretty aware of, you know, the different issues related to vaping. So I'll pause there and see if there are any questions before I move on to showing you the actual um, Tobacco Prevention Toolkit website. I haven't got any yet, um, but feel free throughout the entire webinar to just type any question. We'll go ahead and answer them throughout the presentation. Yep. Yep. So don't hesitate to, to put in a question. I'll check in frequently to see if there's any questions because I want to make sure that this is a useful, you know, use of your time. So I only want to cover what's most important to you. So, um, so what you're looking at here is the tobacco prevention toolkit landing page. So this, um, this is where you're going to find everything that's on the toolkit. So before when we used to do in person trainings, people would come to the training and ask, Oh, when am I going to get my toolkit? Uh, thinking it was going to be a physical, you know, object with different materials inside. But the toolkit is actually our website. And so all of our resources can be found for free online. They're constantly being updated by our team um, based on the latest research, beta, best, best practices for um, education. So the toolkit isn't actually a box, it's a website. And so you'll find all of the materials um, here. So um, because I'm assuming that most folks don't have a ton of familiarity with the Tobacco Prevention Toolkit, I'll go in detail. And if there's something you want to know more about, again, just put it in the chat and I'll make sure to focus on that. Um, so like we say here, this is uh, the toolkit is a labor of love. It's something that we've been working on for over five years. It's cre resources created by um, educators, by parents, by research and most importantly by youth. So we have an active youth um, advisory board that helps us create these materials. They tell us when something isn't gonna work, when young people aren't gonna like it. So um, we're vetted through and through. So, um, and I'm thinking about the roles that you all might play in different school-based um, settings. And there's a, a lot of opportunities to use these materials um, and make it your own and make it fit your needs. So if you have questions about that, again, um, let me know and I'm happy to, to do some technical assistance um, if that's useful. So let me get you oriented to the website. So when you come to the Tobacco Prevention Toolkit website, um, here across the top, you'll see our menu bar. 
Um, and you can hover over and kind of jump to any particular place if you know where you're going. And after you click somewhere else on the website, you can always come back to this landing page by clicking here, the Tobacco Prevention Toolkit um, title. If you click here where it says Stanford Medicine, that'll take you to the Stanford Medicine um, landing page. Uh, so just be careful because that'll send you somewhere else and then you have to backtrack your way. Um, but with, within our website, if you just click here, you'll be able to come back to this page. Um, and our landing page, we use it um, mostly as sort of, you can think of it as a newsletter. We're going to always highlight the newest resources that we have um, or materials or latest uh, research. So if you scroll down on the, on the landing page, you'll see what we're highlighting. So for example, right now, we're highlighting our Healthy Futures curriculum, um, our Going Smoke-Free and Vape-Free page, and our Vaping Prevention Online course. This is what I'm going to talk the most about today, um, and I'll cover the other materials uh, more briefly. This gives you some background and um, highlights a few different activities that you might want to try out um, and other, other features, for example, some of our translated materials. So um, going back up to the top of our website, Again, the menu bar helps you navigate. So the about page is exactly what it sounds like, an about page and <laughs> has information about how to contact us, our team, some frequently asked questions. I'll leave that to you to review on your own time if you are interested. Uh, what I particularly wanna highlight are these two tabs. So we have our take and teach tab and we have our curriculum decision maker. So our take and teach tab is um, designed to give you all of the bits and pieces, all of the different ingredients that we have within our toolkit. So our toolkit is comprised of different activities, uh, different overview PowerPoints. We have different Kahoot quizzes, uh, which we just demonstrated. We have fact sheets and we have discussion guides. So again, you can think of these as the individual ingredients of our toolkit. If you wanna get one big overview of what all those materials look like, we have our curriculum at a glance page. Um, and I'll show you that in a second. So that's the take and teach. Think of it as your ingredients. The curriculum decision maker is our tab where if you don't have the time or the familiarity um, or the resources to kind of put together a recipe using our ingredients, you could just come here and these are already developed recipes. So their curriculum meaning we put together different parts of the toolkit in a particular order so that you're able to just follow along, take the lesson plans and facilitate the, the different curriculums depending on your, your needs. Mm -hmm. So the way that we have the different curriculum items organized are by tobacco topic, so here you can see if you want to know everything we have about e-cigarettes and pod-based um, vapes or hookah, for example, or nicotine addiction, smokeless tobacco, um, or general tobacco, you can look at it there by topic. If, for example, you know you only have one day to talk about um, you know, tobacco prevention, or if you have five days or eight days or 10 days, you could go here and find it by our number of class sessions. If you're interested in finding out what our uh, translated materials are, you can see here by language or by school subject. Um, and then for students caught using, so this is our alternative to suspension um, curriculums, and I can show you that in a little bit more detail in a second, and then our remote teaching. Okay, so again, those take and teach is your ingredients, and your curriculum decision maker is recipes. Um, and then our last tab is our resource directory. And here is where we link to a bunch of uh, relevant information. If you want to know more that isn't covered on our toolkit, uh, we can direct you here. We also have um, some, some materials that might be helpful for you. So our crash courses get are designed for educators to use um, to kind of brush up on information about addiction or the brain or e-cigarettes or any of these topics. Um, so I'll pause there and see if there's any questions. Um, is anyone currently implementing an alternative to suspension for use that are caught using? Oh, are you asking the attendees? Yeah, I'm really curious because I, I mean, I want to learn more about that section too. It's a, it's a area that we're really interested in learning about and, and what's been helpful and what hasn't. Yeah, we would love to hear about that too from um, anything that folks are using and. Um, <clears throat> what I will say is we're in the process of developing uh, an online course for our um, alternative to suspension curriculum. Um, and currently we have uh, we have different uh, broken, we have it broken down by time, but soon we'll be adding another one. We're in the process of um, adding that now. 
We do have a quick question. Is there mm -hmm. closed captioning available for deaf and, and hard of hearing? Is that for today's training or? Um... I think I think um, they're referring to the toolkit, but correct me if I'm wrong. Um... Yeah, let us know, Estela, if you're um, wanting for today's uh, training or, or general sessions. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so with our toolkit materials, they're designed to be uh, facilitated by an educator. So it wouldn't be something necessarily that's um, where you would be watching a, a lot of recordings. There are some videos on our toolkit and most are on YouTube, which does allow for closed captioning, um, but the rest would be facilitated in person. Um, either that or like our online course is done uh, individually and everything is uh, written out. Um, let's see, and Marissa was saying we, that they use brief intervention, great, and a brief intervention, one of the people who um, developed that is also on our team, so there's a lot of overlap there. We have listed Healthy Futures as an option. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so let me show you the curriculum at a glance, and I'll give you sort of an overview of the different ingredients that we have um, before I transition into showing you our Healthy Futures and our vaping prevention course. All right, so here again, I went from the take and teach tab to the curriculum at a glance, and this is going to show you all of the different ingredients that we have. So you can kind of think of this as our pantry or our refrigerator. Again, it's made up of activities, crash courses, discussion guides, cahoots, uh, PowerPoints, and specific curriculum. So if you wanted to look at all of the activities that we have that are um, relevant to e-cigarettes, you would click here and they all pop up. Similarly, if you wanna look at all of the fact sheets that we have related to hookah, you would click here. Uh, overview PowerPoints of nicotine addiction, you click here and it all drops down. And so this is where you can jump to. So say you're, you know, you have a student who asks questions about smokeless tobacco and you really wanna tailor information and present about that in particular, you could go here and see, okay, what can I use here? Um, so hopefully that yeah, that makes sense. You can just jump to what you're looking for using this curriculum at a glance. Um, and let's take a look, or if you want to look at, you know what, I don't have a lot of time to cover things in class or in a clinical setting, but I do have a lot of wall space and I want to put up some fact sheets um, so that students who are coming into the, the clinic might have something to look at while they're waiting. You could just jump right to our fact sheets page and scan through them and see all of the different topics that we cover and decide what might be of interest to the the youth that you work with and you're able to download directly from the the website um, and print it in whatever size is going to work for you or make them as handouts however you decide is going to be the best way to use these fact sheets so again if you wanted to look at um let's say you're doing, we've heard of some people who do, who did this like Kahoot at lunch every Friday. So people would, and this was before when people were um, obviously in person, but they would have uh, in the cafeteria, they would in the, on the large projector, they would play a, a Kahoot, a different one every week. Um, and that was something that they did to kind of just create more of a culture of, of health and wellness in their school. Uh, so they would just go directly to our Kahoots page and you can see there's some instructions for how to use it if you're not familiar, um, but they would just pick one by topic. So this week, maybe they would talk about hookah. And so they would launch um, the, the Kahoot from here. And once you, I'll click on it and I'll show you, it just takes you directly to a Kahoot page. And then you could just play it, launch it there. Um, so they're all really accessible and easy to find. So again, that's the take and teach tab. You could just jump through. Discussion guides are, um, are there, there are materials that are designed to be taken home and uh, allow the young person to open up channels of communication with a trusted adult in their life. Um, and again, some, in some cases that might be a parent and in some cases that might be a coach or maybe the health educator at their um, school-based health center, or it could be their English teacher, whoever it is. We have discussion guides based on different tobacco topics 
here and they're open ended questions they're not right or wrong answers it's not something where it takes a lot of research to answer. Um, these are designed again to open up channels of communication, so we know that a lot of times we have a strong focus on students who get caught using who get caught vaping. Uh, and then, you know, as as trusted adults in their life, we kind of strategize of like, okay, how can we help them out of this difficult situation? And sometimes we don't do a lot of the prevention work on the front end to allow that young person to identify people in their immediate um, environment that they might be able to go to and talk when they're having a, a difficult time or if they're um, feeling challenged by maybe their tobacco use or they're curious about it. Um, they don't really have a lot of opportunity to talk to people about that. And so that's what these discussion guides are intended to do. Um, have those, you know, a, a starting off place. Hey, let's let's start talking about what nicotine addiction means. Let's start talking about um, how tobacco companies are targeting young people. And again, it's not like these conversations have to solve every problem in one conversation, but at least it allows those open channels of communication, which we know are so important for young people in prevention and also cessation of their vaping use. Mm -hmm. So again, that's the discussion guides. Um, and then our activities, these are designed for in-person. So these can be done in uh, after school programs or classrooms or um, you know, even youth advisory board groups um, as, as bonding activities. So they're all broken up by different icons. So you can kind of get an idea of what that particular activity um, includes. So we have warm up activities, we have ones that cover key information, ones that go more in depth. So this is might be really useful if you have peer health educators, for example, and you're wanting to get them a little bit more familiar with um, some talking points related to tobacco prevention. You could check out some of the in-depth activities. Um, there's ones that are student-driven, creative ones, or project-based activities. And so again, you could find those by the different tobacco topics. And you jump here and you can see the little icon and they'll correspond with the icon key up here and give you a brief understanding of what that activity is. If you find one that you're interested in, what you can do, so I'll show you um, spectrum of addiction. So this one is actually Dr. Halpern Felscher's favorite activity that we have on the website. So I'm going to open that up over here so I can show you what the activity page looks like. So it gives you some instruction, some purpose uh, to what that activity covers. It gives you all of the relevant downloads that you might need to facilitate this activity. This one happens to have a lot because it's it's one where you cut down, cut out little sheets and you arrange quotes uh, in a spectrum. So this is sort of a preview of what, what it looks like. And then there's the lesson plan that gives you some of the talking points and then some opportunities to branch out. So say this, this activity was a hit with the students that you work with uh, and you want to branch out and do more related to that, we, we link to that directly on that activity page. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the general activity page. So if you click on any one of these, it'll take you to its own activity page where it provides all of that information. So again, since this is the ingredients or the different options that you have in your sort of toolkit or refrigerator, you can um, take and, and pull together different little pieces and create a curriculum that you know is gonna work with the young people that you, you work closely with. So you can say, oh, I want a fact sheet on this, I want a PowerPoint on this and an activity on this and build it yourself. Um, there's a lot of flexibility there. Uh, so that that's what the take and teach is designed to do and i'm going to briefly show you one of our power or start downloading a PowerPoint so I can show you what these look like so i'll do a little history to set the stage and i'm going to download this PowerPoint. i'm going to give it some time to download and i'll show you what that looks like, um, because we're really proud of our. Let's see if I can share this. We're really proud of our, our um, PowerPoints. We put a lot of effort into them. Uh, obviously, PowerPoint is not always the most ideal you know, method of instruction when working with young people, especially if you're in a clinic setting and maybe don't have the convenience of a laptop you know, right next to you all of the time. But if there are certain situations where you want to cover these types of topics, our, our PowerPoints are really excellent. You can see here we have our teacher talking points. So this is the script that you could follow Every slide has talking points, so you know exactly what you can say to cover that particular slide. Um, or you can read through them and abbreviate or condense, make it your own. Say there's some slides in here that you're interested in covering and some that you're not. 
we empower you to customize these as you see fit. Um, this is the way that we would suggest doing it. But again, you're the expert on the use that you work with. So um, make it your own. You have definitely our permission to do so. We just ask that if you use our materials, you keep our logos um, on them. But other than that, you're, you're free to add in um, slides or, or make whatever customizations um, make the most sense for your group. So let's go back to the website. And we have a ton, a ton, a ton of PowerPoints um, of, of, on a bunch of different topics. So you can go here and see all of the different ones that we have. So we have a lot on for e-cigarettes. And again, there's an the icon key to give you an idea of what's contained within that PowerPoint. Um, all right. So I just covered the take and teach. And I'm going to pause here and give you all an opportunity to ask any questions. Um, or if you're confused about anything, if I need to repeat anything. I don't see any in the chat, but yeah. Okay, cool. So then let's move on so I can show you the other cool stuff. So now you're somewhat familiar with the ingredients we have in the toolkit. So let me show you the different ways that we've combined them um, to create these curriculum. So uh, when we first started out with the toolkit, folks were really interested in having the materials divided into different units. And so that's what we did here. Um, but as we've expanded the toolkit, all of our materials don't really fit neatly into units. So we've transitioned to this different um, format where we provide different curriculum options. The units are still here in some cases, um, so if that's something that fits what you need, check those out. But I think what might be most interesting for you all um, is to look at, so by language, so we know that uh, we're, we're hoping to expand our, our um, translated materials, but currently we have obviously in English, um, simplified Chinese, Spanish, and traditional Chinese. So we have um, a one session activity in every language. We have all of our fact sheets translated um, and materials that go home are, um, are all translated. And I see some questions. So any videos available for students to see? Um, so can you give me more information, Raymond, of what you're looking for in particular? Like, are you thinking um, sort of like an overview of tobacco topics and that sort of thing? Uh, and let me know, yes, okay. Um, so I, we do, let's see, where do I have those? I'll show you on the vaping prevention course. So I'll show you that in a second. So good question. And then Tanisha says, I have a question. How does tobacco hurt you in many ways? Can you be more specific? Um, and what your, what information you're looking for, Tanisha? And while, while you're giving me specifics, I'll point you to a PowerPoint that can help you, um, get, give you a lot more information. So if we go here and we have health effects of e-cigarettes and vape pens. This goes um, kind of gives you an overview of the different health effects that, that are caused by tobacco. And I think we might have, I think that's the one that's gonna cover. And then our um, nicotine addiction. So sometimes people don't think about brain health as overall health, but it definitely is. And so that's covered a lot in the nicotine addiction 101 PowerPoint. Um, and let me see if I can get the copy link. I'll put those in the chat so you can find those directly. And this one. But let's see, do, 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 copy link address. Okay, and so I guess to briefly answer your question, um, Tanisha, there's there's a ton of research about cigarettes and the health effects caused by cigarettes, right? So we have over 50 years of, of uh, short-term and long-term research to show that there is negative consequences, um, especially for the respiratory system and the cardiovascular system, um, because the damage caused by the lungs and to the lungs and to the heart uh, have sort of trickle down effects for the entire body. So basically any sort of um, negative health outcome you can think of can be caused by tobacco use. Um, there's interesting conversations happening right now related to e-cigarettes and vape pens. Um, like I was saying earlier, there isn't a lot of long-term data because these products are so new. There's no way for us to have a full picture of what the long-term consequences of vaping might be. Again, they just haven't been around that long, but that doesn't mean there are not long-term um, health consequences. What research is showing currently 
um, on, on data that's, you know, five to 10 year studies, um, there's significant impact to the heart and the lungs. Um, and in some cases, it, it, it's hard to say definitively, but in some cases, it looks like vaping can cause similar effects to traditional cigarette um, smoking. So again, damage to the lungs and heart because it stresses out the heart to um, to have to work that much harder when the lungs are being damaged with um, aerosols and uh, secondhand aerosols. So I know that's like a really brief and probably oversimplification of some of the health effects, but if you have specific questions, I'm happy to answer that too. And I have another question, um, Adrian. So for that example, um, are there any types of videos available that explain the health impacts of tobacco or how health um, or how nicotine affects our health or is um, it just so uh, slides? So mo right now we have mostly slides. I will show you a video series that we have that we developed for remote instruction that does cover that, um, but not as in depth as a full video. So um, the, with the toolkit, we are, are sort of educational philosophy is that for young people, it's gonna be more impactful for them to hear from a trusted adult in their life versus watching videos. Um, that said, there is, um, there is opportunity to use either. And I think Raymond, something that you might be interested in is what I'll talk about in a second is our vaping prevention course, because this is more hands-on than a video, but it doesn't take an instructor to do the, the teaching. So I'll show you that in a second. Um, from your experience, Adrian, what piece of the toolkit has been most impactful for the youth? So based on what we're hearing, our materials related to, let me show you, oops, our materials related to, to um, e-cigarettes and pod base are most impactful, particularly here in unit six. I'll see if I can copy this um, and put it in there. So our jewel and pod based is, has been the most impactful because it's really responding to the current trends that we're seeing in young people. So, um, the, the number of young people or adolescents, you know, under the age of 25 who are smoking cigarettes is steadily going down over time. But with the rise of e-cigarettes, more young people are consuming nicotine than they have in multiple decades. Um, so in order to properly respond to that rise in nicotine use by young people, it's important to focus on the products that they're using, which right now are typically products with pods, um, which are things like Juul, uh, which are things like Puff Bar, which are disposable um, vaping devices. So any activity that you use that responds to the products that are most popular in your community is going to have a big impact. And then the other that I would say uh, would be activities that are hands-on um, because they they are more memorable for young people. So um, I would say, especially any that are project-based, we have our photo voice project here is a really impactful activity. Um, this one allows young people to take pictures that, of things in their community that um, where, their, where their personal life experience interacts with vaping. Um, and it, it can be really impactful because it's, it's a part art project, part journalism. And if you kind of time it out right, you can do a, a gallery viewing and allow young people to talk about what their experiences, how, how tobacco use affects them, even if they themselves are not a tobacco or nicotine user. So um, those, are, those are ones that I would especially highlight. And I'll highlight, I'll get the, I'll link our PowerPoint that covers Jewel. And again, I apologize for the um, sound in the background. And I'm gonna add this here. So hopefully I'm not uh, linking you all to death, but, uh, and let me know if you have more specific um, questions, Jasmine and others, if, if any. Um, okay, so let's see where we're at with time. We're doing good. Okay, so let me show you um, briefly what we have, what materials we have for alternative to suspension, and then I'll show you our vaping prevention course. So again, to go to our um, alternative suspension, we have it under this category for students caught using. And Healthy Futures was developed again with educators and youth and um, and researchers and doctors, and we have a we have a pretty good group of folks that help us with these activities. So. 
we heard from people that there was a need for different options for for people who were working with young uh, young people who were caught using so to accommodate that we have a one hour version we have a two hour and a four hour the one hour if you're looking for something where you can go one on one so one facilitator with one young person the one hour version is going to be what i would recommend and you can find all the links here um that would be what I recommend because the two hour and the four hour incorporate some discussion and those are for um, situations where maybe there's a group of students that you're working with so a small group. Um, and where discussion or warm up questions and that sort of thing will be more helpful. Um, those are options in the two and the four hour and you can see here kind of it's really small, but the topics that are covered our health effects, which is something that someone asked for earlier, effects on the brain, um, the different messaging, which is another way to say marketing or advertising, um, how, are, how are young people being targeted, that's covered in this section, and then the cost. Um, so the difference between these materials and the rest of the materials on the toolkit is this is catered for an audience where you know the young person is using versus the rest of the toolkit is to prevent use, right? So there's in public health, we have these two different terminologies. So we have prevention, right? And then we have secondary prevention. So prevention after the initiation of, of a negative health activity. And so this would be secondary prevention. I hope I explained that okay. But um, so if you wanna know more about that, I highly recommend um, this page or Healthy Futures. All right, so I'm gonna pause there before I show you our latest and greatest resource, which is our vaping prevention course. So um, I'll take a second and give you a chance to collect your thoughts and um, type in a question if, if you have any. So far, uh, no questions. All right, cool, so I'll move on. So the last thing I wanna show you on this toolkit is our page for remote teaching. So who facilitates, good question, Jasmine. So it could be, there's a lot of different options as to who can facilitate these sorts of lessons. So for the Healthy Futures in particular, I would say, um, it should be somebody who is a trusted adult, maybe in a, in a school setting or even in a clinic setting, um, somebody who's reviewed the materials and understands the broad topics. Um, I haven't heard of any peer educators doing the Healthy Futures um, curriculum, although I think that is a possibility depending on how well-trained peer educators are. The rest of the materials on the toolkit can be facilitated I, I think our number one sort of audience is uh, classroom educators, and then our second is like health educators. So people who might go into classrooms um, and present this information or who might do after school programming could use these materials. Another option is to have students um, review the materials and then do the uh, do the facilitation themselves. So we've had a uh, we've heard of a lot of success stories of people doing that, where um, they use peer educators or have students teach each other concepts. So that's another option. Is there a pre yeah? Is there a pre and post test? Um, oh no problem, Jasmine. Uh, so for for the healthy futures, there is a pre and post test. And then in the vaping prevention course that I'm going to show you, there is a post, pre and post test. But because all of the other materials are sort of, um, you're able to customize them, it doesn't really make sense for us to always provide a pre and post test for the materials. Um, because what we suggest that you cover might not be actually what you cover, so it'd be hard to test that. I hope that makes sense. Um, but Tanisha, if you are interested in, in using some quizzes or pre and post tests, uh, what I didn't mention under the Kahoot quizzes is we have paper versions of all of these quizzes. So if you don't want to take the time to create a quiz, just go to our Kahoot page and look at the Word documents, um, and it'll show you all of the questions that you can use. So you can use those as a pre and a post test for any particular um, subject. So there's ones on all of the different tobacco products um, and different topics. So that's where I would send you. Healthy Futures does have a pre and post test, though. Uh, in all, all three versions. Um, other questions? All right. Okay, 
So last, let me show you our latest and greatest. So to find our vaping prevention course page, um, what you'll do is you'll go to the curriculum decision maker and then at the bottom where it says for remote teaching, you click there. So that's a little bit misleading because you this is designed for remote teaching, but it's absolutely available to be used in person instruction or to assign to a young person um, who might be interested in learning more about vaping prevention. And that's something that you could use Say for example, you're in a clinic setting and there's a long wait time. Um, I remember some of those days working at the health center where all of a sudden we had like a ton of um, uh, unexpected like students coming into the clinic and there was a, a long wait time. And so this might be something that you could, um, you know, recommend that people do while they're waiting for, for their visit or to do after a visit. So I would do health education and sometimes it would be helpful to kind of provide some additional resources for topics that I didn't have enough time to cover um, in the clinic visit. And so this could be something that you use in that setting. Um, you would just send them the link and say, oh, here's some, you know, we talked a little bit about your vaping use and you're interested in cutting back. If you want to learn more, check out this course. Um, this, that might be a way that you could use this. And Adrian, then, as we transition into in-person for, for some sites and some schools, um, a question in the chat was, where would one obtain samples of different tobacco products? What has been helpful, Raymond, for people that we work with is to ask um, whoever, is, whoever is in charge of confiscating um, devices at your school would be a really great person to ask. So a lot of times, um, you know, security guards or class, you know, classroom educators or administrators will have sort of like a box somewhere in the office locked up of a bunch of devices that have been used or um, been confiscated on campus. Um, so things like that would be my first suggestion. Do be careful though, because since a lot of the electronic devices, well, since all of them are battery operated um, and there's not a lot of tight regulation on these devices, there is the potential for uh, number one, potential explosions of batteries, which we've heard of. And then second, um, leaking of, of the fluids that are um, inhaled. So that can be potentially dangerous if they have high nicotine content and that can be absorbed in your skin. So I would recommend putting devices in plastic baggies and only handling them with gloves, not letting young people touch them, um, only using them for display or parents or whoever you're you know, presenting to. Um, so use a lot of caution when handling these types of devices um, if you if it is really important for you to have the different tobacco products on hand. Very last choice I would say is to purchase them. We do know some people do that because it is helpful to have it as an instruction aid to have to show what different devices look like. Um, but use it as a last resort because it, it's still, you know, kind of pro leading to profits for these types of companies. Um, and then Elliot suggests local PD generally have a display, which is another option. Um, so hopefully that helps Raymond. And in the meantime, if, if those are difficult to obtain, we have um, in our PowerPoints on e-cigarettes, we show um, some different some different devices. And then we have a fact sheet that shows different devices as well. So check those out um, if you need some visual aids in the meantime. So really great questions. Um, all right. So if there's no other questions, I'll move on to the vaping prevention course. All right, so we developed this online course uh, at the beginning of the shutdown of everything because we realized that just because people were doing remote learning did not mean that we should skip uh, tobacco education and tobacco prevention education. Um, so we developed this course and we pulled from different parts of our toolkit and we put it on an online platform so that um, you could use it. You can use these uh, this materials during a Zoom one on one with the student or uh, if you wanted to have like a after after school class or something like that, you could definitely use it in that sort of a setting. Or like I mentioned before, it's something that you can assign or hand off to a young person and say, hey, this is a really great resource. Check this out. Um, there's, you know, opportunities to learn about a, a lot of different aspects of vaping. So we have it broken down and I'm going to skip the teach one module that that part of the lesson plan, because I'm assuming and let me know if I'm wrong, but I'm assuming that a lot of you aren't going to be doing uh, maybe like a five day 
uh, tobacco prevention sort of course. Um, but if you are, let me know and I can talk about that more in detail. But instead, I'm going to show you what the vaping prevention course has. So here on this page, you'll see the purpose and how we would recommend teaching this over Zoom. Uh, we have a bunch of downloads here that you can look at on your own, including the, the Kahoot that we played at the beginning of, um, of this presentation that you can find here. And then more information about um, how to use this, this course. So all of that, I'll let you review on your own because I don't think it's going to be a super good use of our time today to go over that. And instead, I want to show you the course itself. So to jump to the course here, you'll see this blue hyperlink and I'm going to click that and it's going to take me to the course. So this is what the course looks like. You can tell it's a different platform, right? It's not exactly on our toolkit website. We're linking to a separate platform. Here, um, you can create your own login information, your own account, and students can as well. And all of those directions are on the page, um, on the directions page. And here's where you'll see the outline of the course content. So for this online course, we cover an introduction to e-cigarettes, and there's some small mini lessons within that. It looks like a lot, but I'll show you what these pages look like and it's not it's not too much work. Um, so a real, in, oops, well, I jumped to it. So here's, here's the introduction sort of page. It kind of gets people oriented to the course. Um, and we have an introduction by one of our youth action board members, Luca. So he gives an overview sort of, of what to expect in this conversation. Um, and then we jump into some of the content. So. Um, there's, and I know someone had questions about closed captioning before, if you're assigning this to somebody, uh, we try to make, to adjust for some um, accessibility, we have directions written out, but then we also have them recorded here, so people can listen to them as well. And so the, uh, the course has a bunch of different little activities where you can type things in, you know, respond to the questions, um, and keep going, there's some like, drag and drop click answer sort of thing um, and this is to increase um, the engagement for youth and again you could be you could be displaying this via zoom if you're doing a one-on-one -on -one or in a classroom projected up onto the um, the board in the front a lot of different ways that you could use it um, so what you do is you can use this menu bar on the side and it shows you all of the different subjects so here we're in a real intro to e-cigarettes on this page and you can see we have different modules. So all of the chemicals from liquid to aerosol, what's the damage health effects of the aerosol, one about nicotine and one about marketing. Because we had a question about health effects, I'm gonna jump to that page so I can show you what it looks like. And so you can see, you can jump across all of the different pages here, and you can even jump to smaller um, sections if you want to, or you could just use this next button and it'll take you in order through the course. Um, so here's where we talk about some lung effects um, and sort of do a little bit of quizzes. It describes what happens in the lungs. So essentially there's swelling of the airways, which makes it more difficult for air to pass through and the air sacs um, get damaged due to vaping or inhaling aerosols. So, and then there's an opportunity to test your knowledge before moving on. And then the next section you can see is COVID-19 and vaping. So we describe a little bit what's happening there and why there's the increased um, risk for a severe infection, so on and so forth. And then you can see here, we have what happens to the heart um, and then a key takeaways, which just summarizes what was in that section. So this gives you just a, a brief sort of feel for what the course looks like. I do wanna highlight the marketing section. So again, this is a topic that um, is really impactful for young people because they don't like the idea of being manipulated by tobacco companies. And so when you talk about those marketing tactics, um, that's something that typically resonates with young people. And this could be something that you even do on your own, do the course, see what some of the most important talking points are, and use that to structure the conversations that you have um, with young people. So here we talk about flavors, and then we talk about menthol, and sort of the history of menthol and why this is of particular concern. Um, we have we show sort of how the um, black community has been targeted with menthol marketing by looking at ads from the um, 70s. And then it ends with this really great um, spoken word um, video that's 
uh, I think was a prize winning um, spoken word. So it's a really impactful um, video. And then you'll see here, we also have references. So if you're kind of into learning about the science and all of that, there's plenty of opportunities to look for it. Um, and we also call, cover social media and so on and so forth. So that is, let's see if I missed anything that I wanted to focus on. Um, so I know I went through that really fast. And again, this is just the landing page that shows you all of the different, the different sections. Um, are there any questions that I missed? Um, okay, that was Elizabeth adding that there's a training for something for the um, expert. Okay, cool. So any questions about the vaping prevention course? Cultural aspects of tobacco use. Um, I'm not sure I'm understanding what you're asking for, Kathy. Maybe, yeah, can you give me a little bit more detail? Because I have a, a few ideas of what you might be referring to, but um, I don't want to ask, answer the wrong question. And I'll give you a second to. Uh, while you're typing that, I'm going to go back here to our website and just show you our cannabis toolkit briefly. Um, so Kathy, I'm not sure what you're we're referring to, but um, okay, yes, great. That's what I was <laughs> wondering about. So um, traditional tobacco versus commercial tobacco. Um, currently, we don't have materials about that distinction, although it is really important to recognize that um, everything we're talking about here is commercial tobacco use and does not, is not the same thing as traditional tobacco use, which is um, sometimes used by certain Native American communities um, in cultural ceremony. Um, so it's something that we're, we don't currently have any materials on that, but if you have suggestions for things that you would like to see, Kathy, um, feel free to, to send them my way. I'm happy to, to take that on. And um, we are currently working on new materials particularly for um, different communities. We're working on some information for LGBTQ communities to highlight diff different marketing tactics that have been used against them, uh, as well as women. And uh, we're going to um, build out more of our racial equity piece on tobacco. So um, this is definitely something that I can bring back to the group and add that to our, um, add that to our, our list of things that we want to talk more about. Uh, let's see, I see another question. Do you have programs for younger children such as those in K through eight? So that's a question we get a lot because unfortunately youth are using tobacco products at a younger and younger age. Um, currently we don't have anything that's specifically developed for K through sixth grades um, because that's not necessarily our area of expertise or the, the consortium of people that we work with to develop these um, lessons, that's not their level of expertise, but it is something we're getting more questions about and something we're thinking about. That said, um, there's a lot of materials here that can be adjusted to fit different age groups. And if you have questions about how to do that in, in particular, reach out to me or Raymond and we can talk about that more offline. Um, and talk about toxins in commercial tobacco. Yep, that's a good point. Um, in commercial tobacco. Right. Okay. Um, all right. So with that, I want to take the last few minutes before question and answer to show you our cannabis awareness and prevention toolkit briefly. So I'm going to put this link in the chat. Oh, wait, let's see. Okay. So similar to our tobacco prevention toolkit, we have our cannabis awareness and prevention toolkit. Um, and this has materials focused on cannabis use. This is our newer toolkit. So it doesn't have as many materials as the tobacco prevention toolkit, but it's a really great resource, especially because we know that young people um, who use tobacco products, particularly vaping products, um, tend to also be using cannabis products or don't know that they're using both or might think that they're using one but end up using both. Um, so there is a lot of overlap between cannabis use 
tobacco use and e-cigarettes. So that's what's referred to as a triangulum, the three of those things, because there is such a tight knit relationship between those three, especially for young people. Um, so if you're doing some tobacco use um, education, it's important to try and incorporate cannabis and tobacco use or cannabis use um, prevention as well. So similarly, we have our landing page and it'll direct you to our different modules. Um, and you can also find those up here at the top. So if you want to find materials about the basics of cannabis or health effects or THC in the brain or refusal skills, those are found here. And if you want to look at our remote learning curriculum, you can find that here in its own tab. So similar to the other one, um, we have it broken down by different topics, but this one we don't have an online course for. This one is using slides um, and um, slides and a, and a form where they respond to questions. So this can be done in a classroom setting, over Zoom, or independently, depending on what works for your particular um, for your particular class. And that just reminded me, I needed to show you videos on somewhere else, but. Um, and so someone was asking about videos earlier. If you go to our resource directory, we have several videos about cannabis um, with Ralph Cantor, who is a local um, high school educator, who's an expert on talking to young people about cannabis. So if you wanna find some of those video clips, those are here and I'll put the link in the chat for our resource directory page. And I'm, I'm not expecting that you keep all of the links that I'm sending. I'm just sending so you can find the ones that are relevant to you. Um, so that's just like a really, you know, five minute overview of our cannabis awareness uh, and prevention toolkit. And I'm going to jump back to, okay, ignore my, my jumping around. Let's see. Oh, I'll have to find where the videos are. And maybe I can send you that page later, Elizabeth, and you can send that out to folks because I'm trying to remember, we do have videos for um, for vaping prevention. I'm, we just restructured our website. So I don't know exactly where there's sitting. We'll be sure to send out any um, links along with the webinar recording. And then we do have a question. Um, are there any fact sheets on tobacco cannabis use? Um, specifically the impact it has on the Latino community? Um, we don't have anything on that currently. Um, but if you have suggestions, Juan, again, this is a good time to send me any because we're, we're in the middle of updating some materials and adding things. Um, so fortunately, I think for, fortunately in the United States, I think uh, the Latino population has one of the lowest rates of, of tobacco use compared to other racial ethnic groups. Um, that said, there is still a lot of work to be done there, especially with young people, for young people who um, have high accessibility to tobacco products. Um, and we know that, again, co-use of, of tobacco products and cannabis products is um, especially impactful for, for young people. So um, something like that would be really helpful, it sounds like from, from other people. And then where there'll be more updates on the Cannabis Toolkit. Yes, Crystal, there will be. Um, because we have multiple projects happening at once, we haven't had a chance to add um, some of our newer materials, but we will be soon. So that's our goal for the, the summer. And that actually reminds me, I can, um, I can send you this new toolkit. We actually have a third toolkit <laughs> that we just launched, and this is specifically for healthcare providers. Um, so that might be you or somebody that you work with. Um, the, the visit is what we call it, which is Vaping Information Solutions and Interventions Toolkit. This doesn't have any um, lessons or, or anything that you would show young people necessarily. This is a good place for healthcare providers to learn more about vaping and then um, help youth work through um, either cutting back or um, stopping vaping and um, that, that can be done in a clinical setting. So we, it's, it's a similar format to the other um, toolkits where we have the menu bar across the top. The clinical encounter is where we have the most relevant um, or helpful resources because it gives you information about how to ask about um, vaping use or what to ask, how to ask, and what to do after asking. We have printable materials, we have further resources. Um, so this might be another resource that you have. Again, this is the audience here is healthcare providers whereas with the other toolkits, it's educators. Um, there's a lot of overlap, but they're slightly different. 
And then Juan is saying, it would be interesting to see a study conducted in high tobacco outlet communities. Um, yeah, do you have do you have suggestions about more about that, Juan? Because there, there is a ton of um, research being done on that sort of topic, but um, it'd be interesting to hear what, what specific suggestions you have. Um, all right, so I know that was kind of a whirlwind of information and I hope um, if nothing else that you took out of this this presentation, I hope what you will take away is the vaping prevention course, because like I said, it's such a flexible resource that you can use in a lot of different settings or simply hand off to a young person that you know might be interested in learning more about vaping. Um, and you know, then they can come back to you and have a conversation about it after. So there's a lot of lot of flexibility here. Um, so if nothing else, this would be the number one resource that I highlight for you all, because like I said, it's so such a flexible resource. Um, all right, so I'll open it up to um, questions. And if people have more specific questions, this would be a good time to ask. Like, you know, what what would I what would you suggest for somebody working with, um, you know? youth in, in rural areas or, or whatever your questions might be. So happy to answer those. And also feel free to reach out to us if anything comes up after. Um, I know it's a lot of information at once, but I hope that, you know, as you navigate the website, you become a little bit more comfortable because it's an, it's an amazing resource, very comprehensive. Yeah, I'm putting my email address in the chat as well. So reach out if you have, I know sometimes it takes a while to kind of review things and orient yourself, see what's there. Um, and then later questions come up and then you're like, oh shoot, I wish I would have asked this, you know, in the training. So don't hesitate to, to reach out to me directly. Um, okay, let's see. Have you seen materials be used by youth to teach adults about prevention? Ooh, Kathy, that's such a good question. You know, I haven't. I haven't, but I think that that's a really great idea. Um, I'm so I'm so appreciative of all these ideas coming because sometimes in the work that we do, I'm sure you all have this too. You kind of get used to your own cycle of thinking and that sort of stuff. So I love hearing these new ideas. Um, that's I have seen co presentations uh, in like PTA PTSA sort of environments where um, families go in person to like a you know, vaping prevention night or something at school. And there's co-facilitation between um, a student and an adult, but I have not ever seen, um, I haven't seen specific instructions about how to talk to teens in the way that you're describing. So that's a really good idea, uh, especially I think for our healthcare providers toolkit, um, that could be something really interesting because we, it, with the young people that we talk to, um, they talk a lot about how adults in trying to be helpful can sometimes talk down to them or not use the right terminology or focus on the wrong um, the wrong topics. So for me, for example, I know like the health effects of these products is really interesting to me, but there's a lot of young people who really don't care about, you know, physical health yet because that's just not a priority for them. It's not something they have to think about a lot. So if I'm overly focused on the health effects and that doesn't matter to them, whatever I'm saying isn't gonna really be as relevant to them um, as maybe talking about marketing or talking about, um, you know, different different topics such as that. So that's a really good point, Kathy. Um, I appreciate that, that suggestion. That said, you could use these materials to do exactly what you're describing. Um, all, all it would take is maybe one adult to help train the young people on the talking points and, and sort of answer any questions, but, I think youth are often better instructors than adults because they, they're more innovative and um, can be more engaging. So a uh, really great point. I'm gonna go ahead and share um, a few more slides right before we close out and share some links. And I'll talk a little bit about those in just a moment. I know it's a lot. So please feel free to um, send any questions over if something comes up um, about any of the toolkits. And I did just wanna um, ask you all, you're all invited to save the date to the California School-Based Health Alliance's 2021 virtual school-wide health 
um, school health conference. And so those dates are November 2nd to the 4th and um, it's in partnership with uh, Rel West. And I wanna encourage you all in the last link that I just sent um, to explore our website to become a member. And there's tons of benefits. And so there's conference registration discounts, member only tools, resources, and technical assistance tailored to, tailored to your organizational needs. And so I just invite everyone to take a look at that. And if you're able to come up, become a member, that would be awesome and join our network. And here is my email and then here's all our social media platforms. And um, right before our time ends, I just want to let everyone know and ask if you could please fill out a, I think it has about five short evaluation questions so that we can learn how to best support our, this field um, in your work with young people. And so if there aren't any, feel free to send any last minute questions. We do have plenty of time, but for anyone that's, um, that has to go now. I just want to thank you all so much for joining us today. I know it's a Friday um, and we invite you to our upcoming webinars that I linked in um, the chat and thank you all so much. Um, but we'll hang on tight here for a few more minutes if anyone has any questions and that um, evaluation will automatically pop up.